Hey guys, what's up? It's uh, Andy Brew here. And today I'm going to give you my Mythic Frec tank guide as prop pally and just like a few pointers that might help you throughout the fight. I'm going to take my most recent kill of this boss and basically just like analyze different things and tell you basically what to do on the fight, etc. Blah, blah, blah. So essentially the fight starts. Uh, my core tank Mirrors is going to start the boss. Uh, I get a little bit of aggro on pull, but he's going to taunt back just before. He's going to take the first tank frontal. Essentially, uh, every time you take the frontal, you get this uh, stacking kind of debuff that makes it so that uh, you take basically like additional damage every time Firek melee someone, uh, either you or someone else, um, like a different tank, for example. Um, so yeah, I'm going to then taunt after him. First firestorms happen. I'm going to move the boss. So we pre-place the boss in this position on the left side so that the, the mythic mechanic that happens, the mythic soaks, uh, that they can be filled up in this kind of like slot so that we can have like like a good amount of space basically. If you don't have like, if, if the boss isn't positioned in a good way, it's going to be hard for, you know, these mythic soaks to be good and you might not end up with like good space towards the end of phase one. Other than that, you have like a, you know, you have, I take the first, the second, uh, frontal of the fight um you honestly just want to make sure as prop pally that you pop a defensive of some kind before every frontal otherwise you're going to take a lot of damage um so yeah basically i pop my frac trinket uh, i take the frontal i soak the middle one as well then i move the boss up the blaze is going to happen only important thing to do with blazes for the most part um, especially in phase one and phase two is to just stand still if you get a blaze or you move in the line of your blaze Obviously, I have the frontal, so I'm not going to move at all with this blaze. I'm just going to stand still, and I basically just pop my Arden here. I still have like a bit of a, sh a shield from Fright Trinket. And then Mirrors is going to tank taunt. He's going to tank the boss, and he's going to move it slightly into the poop for the Dream Rend, so that the Dream Rend is baited good. Um, then we're going to like kind of move up a bit. I'm going to sack the Disc Priest, who's ramping. Honestly, a lot of times, especially on progress, I mostly sacked healers just so that they have like less mental globals and they you know don't have to worry about you know their, their hp as much and they can just focus on like healing the raid most of the time i would say unless you're you know using reactive defensive on someone for the most part you just want to send your externals on healers at difficult points where they need to heal or, or do you know significant healing of some kind mostly squishy healers like priests something like a mistweaver you'd never really want to external to be honest with you or a holy paladin for the most part uh but yeah uh anyway the second blazes happen um i don't get the blazes i don't really care about getting hit by a blaze as a tank to be honest with you other tanks might but yeah um but yeah, basically Mirrors is going to get two more frontals here and then I'm going to taunt afterwards. He moves the boss in a better position after the Firestorm for the next, the second Mythic Soaks. Uh, then I taunt the boss afterwards. I soak my Mythic Soak and then I'm going to move uh, the boss further up so that we have really nice positioning for these blazes that are com coming so that people can spread. This is like genuinely a like hard overlap where you have blazes plus you have to dodge frontals. Um, I'm just going to make sure that the boss is still um i'm gonna press ardent for the frontal that's my defensive um and then other than that i'm just basically slamming the boss right now uh mirrors is gonna taunt again for the second um dream rent that's coming now um and then i'm gonna pop my i'm gonna pop my horse here just for movement speed to get to, close to the boss so that i don't get sucked in and uh, get hit by these dream rend orbs we didn't really talk about it but the only thing with dream rend is you don't really want to move ahead of the group because you might end up baiting a dream rend basically the way that dream rend works is it spawns a bunch of orbs that are baited on players now you might only end up having one orb baited on you per dream rend uh, but you could also have two it's uh very possible so yeah you just basically don't want to move ahead and bait them in front of other people moving because then they'll get hit by them and like dps or healers getting hit by this um, especially when you're taking big damage, uh, they're often going to die here. The other thing is, I also, I spell ward the Disc Priest on his, like, next big ramp. So that he can just fully focus on healing, doesn't have to worry about getting hit by um, his Dream Rends. And he can fully focus on doing, like, a really big ramp here. Um, the Mirrors is going to move the boss over. We're going to get the last Blazes here. Um, just have to, 
Like dodge them. We stop damage on the boss here so that we can phase him at a good time. He, Mirror's just going to bait the frontal really nice into the poop. Um, and these other ones. So the other clones, these random clones, they are actually baited on the closest target. So for example, if we like roll it back here a bit. So basically Jinji baits these uh, shade frontals away from the group. Like really nice. Uh, definitely something that we just can go on. Um, so yeah, other than that, we basically, we stop damage to basically phase the boss at a good time. Um, and then other than that, we're moving on to the next phase. Um, so I'm going to talk briefly a little bit about Mythic Freck, uh, like the intermission. Um, I'm not going to be talking too much about the software like Echo uses since I can't really talk about that. But essentially most groups or people that have killed this boss use some sort of like macro press to basically kind of like sort out who goes where. Uh, for the most part though, a big consensus tactic is that you have the tanks on the on the wings. Um, so yeah, basically I'm usually like always like on the, the right one, kind of like orbs. Um, only thing that I would tell you is that it's really good just to check behind you when looking at orbs uh, and soak them that way. Uh, like always like kind of like turn around at the start and uh, count orbs from the beginning so you can count which one you're doing um, and then other than that I move out towards the end and I like do kind of like a bubble soak soak lots of the last wave the reason why we immune this last wave is essentially every time you take an orb you basically take more and more damage from the next orb that you soak so a lot of these people would be taking like a tremendous amount of damage and it might kill them uh, a lot of the raid damage that's happening it's like very high in this phase uh but yeah that's all there is really to the intermission phase the only thing is as a tank uh, i would never soak an orb of a different type without an immunity it does a tremendous amount of damage uh so yeah definitely something you have to watch out for um but yep anyway we're going on to phase two um so yeah phase two mirrors is going to take the the first two frontals so uh, this tier, kind of a lot, we try to make use of the shattering bone damage from from uh, Blood Decay. Um, by having the Blood Decay just tank more often. With Propeller more as the off tank. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that's like just something that's like a little bit different about Blood Decay and then other tanks is that uh, you kind of gain a lot or you gain an insane amount from or always tanking something, like always losing bone shield stacks. So you get CDR on uh, dancing room weapon. So yeah, that's something that Mirrors and I, when we play this comp, try and play around a lot. Um, so yeah, here, basically, just before the soak. So this soak does kind of a lot of damage. Um, I, as a tank, um, use a macro here to basically insta taunt one of them. You can just do a really simple macro that's just a hashtag show tooltip next line slash target dark colossus and then next line slash cast and of reckoning which is the paladin taunt and basically that's what i do i just have a separate keybind and it's like a macro that then insta taunts and targets this dark colossus um, it's really useful because like you don't want to taunt you know the same mob as the other tank like you both want to taunt the individual mob and it definitely helped a lot because we did have a few deaths early on in progress where one of the shamans would just get insta aggro there was like a pool i think where mirrors knight onto the same colossus it's really nice just to have a uh a macro that kind of like fixes that um and then what i do here is after the first tank ability i uh taunt mirrors uh, colossus off of him and the reason why is because if mirrors isn't tanking anything he can fully focus on grips when he had like a lot less gear uh it was kind of nice for him just like fully focus on all the grips and i would just take both the glosses for him so that he could just fully focus on that job but yeah basically before the uh explosion ends where which spawns the ads um i basically pre pop ardent and then on the first tank frontal i pop guardian to help me a little bit with tanking these mobs because i don't really want to place my empowered consecration here uh then i pre frack trinket I place my powered consecration now. Um, and then basically, yeah, I'm just like basically doing damage uh, after this. The only thing else you have to watch out for is you want to move these mobs away from this pack 
kind of like the spirits of Calderoy. They can also spawn on the right hand side as well. Uh, so you might need to move this pack more to the left. Usually we did that with like a ring of peace on the ads. Like they would move over to here and I would move like the Colossus over to the left side as well. Um, but it's, yeah, it's RNG whether or not which, which spawn you get. Um, after this, I kind of like move further up with the boss. I, 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 um, so the boss comes like further up. I taunt the frontal for mirrors and then essentially this creates a really nice space for the blazers so that the blazers don't hit the, the new adds that are spawning. Um, it's the same reason why at the start of P2 we drag the boss all the way down at the bottom just for like to have good blazers so that they don't hit these adds. Uh, really important because if your blaze does hit an ad it's going to die and it's going to spawn like one of the adds from the mission or one of the adds from the, like, the spawn from the breath. Um, so yeah, we basically, here we get, you know, the big ads again. We do the same, like, special taunt thing here. Um, here, I'm kind of saving my power consecration for the ads. There is, like, a lineup where you, like, pre-pop it here, and then you can get it back again. Um, but yeah, just before the breath happens, I bubble taunt, which makes me able to pre-position in the breath slightly earlier. And it also force taunts the boss, which is really nice because I want boss aggro so that he insta jumps on me when he comes back um, for positioning. Uh, then I shield my mob that like it's it fine. Um, here a mistake happens where I think someone fucked up and we accidentally got this tree. Uh, so I ended up having to tank that as well, which doesn't normally happen, but yeah. Um, Happened, happened on the second set, which was a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, then the boss is going to spawn. It's going to insta aggro on me. I like pre-pop Ardent here. I have like moment of glory, like kind of like still or like my second moment of glory um, in this phase popping. Um, and then, yeah, this tree doesn't hit too hard. So it's kind of like whatever that we spawned him um, as long as the 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 tree doesn't die like the meter still tree doesn't die from having uh, less hp uh but fortunately we the healers were able to like pull through and save it um so yeah other than that i'm basically just doing like dps here uh so here i don't know i don't really like it personally i still don't know what 100 percent best thing is but here i actually end up saving my uh, wings here and the reason why is because if I wings here it won't uh, like overlap with the bloodlust that happens soon um, so I do believe I end up losing a full set of wings but I think it's worth for overall boss damage um, just because I get like a really big pop with empowered consecration moment of glory ocean everything inside bloodlust uh, which is like an insane amount of damage um, so yeah, basically Mirrors starts tanking the boss in phase 3 and uh, he takes basically the first 4 stacks of the uh, the boss. Basically you always want to have like one tank take all of the tank busters from the boss before each time you basically need to use a seed for the apocalypse roar. And the reason why is because uh, for the seeds, because you're going to be rotating them, you're going to be carrying a seed as a tank, um, which I will show you soon. So because Mirrors took the first four, that means he's going to pick up the first Corrupted Seed um, that spawns, or, or one of the first Corrupted Seeds, which he does now on the, my right side. So basically him and I are going to be rotating, carrying the seed throughout the fight, which you'll see. Um, but yeah, just before this, I uh, this first one, I just popped my Frack Trinket, you know, the first two stacks. And then after this, you know, I, I'm like fully blasting with Moment of Glory and Bloodlust right now. Um, and then after this, I'm going to Ardent, the third and fourth tank buster. But they're like kind of like chill to take, to be honest with you. Um, and then basically, Mirrors is going to give me the seed soon. We're going to wait after these last swirly spawn. And he's going to drop it in front of me. And then I'm going to Horsey, go into the seed, get the buff, and then insta gateway out. So I can move my positioning to a different place. Um... And then, so when you're carrying a seed as a tank, you just got to make sure, like you're going to take, 
You're going to be taking a lot of ticking damage here as Prop Paladin because of the fact that the movement is a little bit scuffed. You're going to be outside your Consecration. You're going to be ticking down from the tank buster stacks from the boss. Plus you have the seed stacks on top. So you just need to be kind of like mindful um, of your HP here. Uh, but pretty soon on my second set of wings in this phase, I'm going to be okay. I actually almost get hit by um, Mirrors' blaze there. It's definitely something you have to watch out for is like your positioning with the, the blazes. Um, I get a blaze here, so I insta drop my seed. Or like, well, I like move a bit. Um, it's really helpful to have like a good weak aura, I would say, for this. Um, also, I sack one of the demon hunters. I believe it's Salted, who was picking up a seed or had a seed just before this, uh, just to help him a little bit survivability wise. It's something that you can definitely watch out for in this phase. I get this, I move a bit, I drop it, and then I pick it back up. Um, you don't want to leave it too long on the floor because otherwise it'll start pulsing and doing a bit of raid damage. But yeah, essentially for the most part, um, that's all there is to it with seed carrying. Uh, then I drop it for mirrors. And basically because he's a blood decay, he's going to like position, reposition the boss because I want to tank where I am right now. I'm going to taunt here. So here is a really danger moment as Pro Paladin. I have a lot of stacks from the boss, like from from the seed. Plus, I also have like the Apocalypse Raw still ticking on me. Um, and then, yeah, plus he's meleeing you as well. And then he's about to do like big uh, kind of like tank frontals. So honestly, like what I have been doing since progress is like I basically pop Guardian almost straight away coming out of this phase just to help me survivability wise. Um, I could take a pain up in external here if the priest doesn't been using it on someone else. Um, and then, yeah, for the first two uh, kind of like frontal, the first two tank bosses here, I just have Ardent plus my tank trinket. And then the third and fourth um, of this like phase, I bubble taunt. Uh, which is going to help me out a lot, basically. Um, the only thing to watch out for here is if you get Blaze, to, to watch out for like not hitting, let's say, the Demon Hunter or your fellow tank's line, uh, like their seed that they're carrying. Um, and then basically, Mirrors is going to taunt here. Going to drop his seed as well. I pick up the seed. And then I'm going to gateway through. Um... And then, yeah, we're just going to basically finish off the boss here. Uh, but yeah, that's about like all there is to it in terms of like taking the seeds. The seeds are kind of basic, I would say, uh, as a tank. Like, not really too much going on with it. It's not really too complex. I would say like a lot of weak auras definitely kind of like ca carry how to do it as a tank. Um, or, or, well, can help you out massively. Like if you have one that shows like your tank partner when you seed, and if you have like one that shows when the basically that it's gonna start ticking on the raid, for the most part as well. Like with most people's positioning on this boss, you can be kind of like far away from people, so you don't need to worry about blazes too much. Uh, but yeah, that's basically all there is to it. This boss. But yeah, that kind of like sums up my I guess Ferrek tank guide. For the most part, it's just like the normal. You know, rotating big defensives for every tank buster, making sure you have good movement for your DPS and uh, or your overall raid. And uh, yeah, just uh, watching out for like important raid mechanics like seeds and stuff uh, that have to be done quickly, otherwise, you have to. But yeah, uh, this was kind of like a barely kind of basic guide. I hope that this helps people who are progressing this boss or are going to progress this boss if you guys have any questions you guys can hit me up on my stream i hope this helps you guys uh kill the boss and yeah anyway thank you guys for watching appreciate it thank you bye bye